Welcome back guys. So it's time to get back to the fun stuff and sticking it to Windows Defender and messing around with my favourite toolsets, the C2 frameworks. I know we looked at Havoc in our last C2 review and session, which I really liked, but today we want to be giving Villain a go. And not that type of Villain, but rather the one made by Cybersec researcher T313 Marches. This gives us an exciting opportunity to test what offensive capabilities are on offer with this tool. However, it is important to recognize that this tool also raises significant concerns from a cyber security perspective. The description of Villain as a Windows slash Linux backdoor generator highlights the potential for malicious actors to gain unauthorized access to target systems and data, posing significant risks such as data exfiltration, espionage, and other malicious activities, which we've covered in my other sessions if you want to go back to those videos. With that said, blue teamers must be vigilant in understanding and exploring these types of vulnerabilities in order to improve our own security posture and that of our clients. One of the more interesting features of Villain is its ability to create a network of compromised systems, expanding the potential attack surface and making it more difficult to detect and mitigate these types of threats. That's not without saying its obfuscation power, which we're going to look at later in the video. This presents both an opportunity and challenge for red teamers seeking to test and improve their offensive capabilities. It is important to note that Villain's payloads are derived from Hoaxshell, another well-known C2 tool. This suggests that Villain is highly sophisticated in the way it's been developed, but also it gives a challenge to the native Windows Defender to detect and mitigate these such threats. So that's enough theory for now, so let's just get stuck in. Right, now we're back at the Kali Linux box and we can open up the repo for Villain. So we have it by the CyberSec researcher from Athens, now living in Poland, Panagatis, Chartas, AKA T313 Machus. So he has the repo villain pinned. He also has hoax shell pin, another great C2. And now if we go down and we just need to install it really. So installation is quite simple. Git clone it, CD into the directory and then install the requirements. I've already done so to save time on the video. And here we have, there's the requirements. You just pip that in and off you go. Now to run the command, we want to run python dot slash villain dot pi. And now this will run the free servers required for the C2. So we have the core server. This essentially establishes the collaboration methodology in which you can collaborate with other villains and other villain instances. Now we have the hoax shell engine for the personal instance that you're gonna execute. And then we have the netcat multi-listener on 443. Now then, if we type help, we can see how vast or unvast the C2 really is. In this instance, I believe it's well documented. So we have the connect command which will connect us to other sibling servers that's if we're going to spin them up and run i'll try and demo that later in the video we have generate which will be the core command to generate any backload payloads we have the sibling command and these three print commands here sibling session and backdoor all are informational commands next we have the execute command which basically we can fire a command or a file within this attacking machine directly onto the victim's machine once we've exploited it. We have shell which will give us an interactive shell in order to actually interface with said affected machine. We have alias if you want to change the names of the, the long string machine ID names to more shortened names. Reset, kill and repair basically these three try to reinitiate or end the sessions that you no longer want. We have ID, which prints the unique server ID, clear and exit all self-explanatory. So 
we want to first hit help and generate and tab command auto complete is working here which is superb now then we have payload generation capabilities for windows and linux machines which is lovely now for windows we want to generate we specify the operating system we specify the l host that could either be an ip address fixed or a dynamic interface then you can either execute a exec command and specify the domain and also you have obfuscate encode for base64 i believe and a constraint mode which i'm not too sure is doing similarly for linux you have the same command types so we want to explore whether villain can actually bypass the native windows defender that would be amazing to see so let's generate operating system equals windows as we know now we want the l host to be the local ip address so we just put the eth0 address in then we want let's just fire that and see what it does first excellent so this produced a payload backdoor using powershell we can see here so let's take this code and we can see it's based in powershell and let's really dissect what has gone on here all right so let's really examine this payload so we got first of all the s which is equal into this ip address and binding port number and it's got this i variable here which is bound to this so i is bound to this variable here and p is the ip address now it uses this invoke rest method cdm let with the use basic pause switch to send the rest api request to the specific url here which is invoking a computer name and username native variables with the specific headers and authorization header with the value of i also then it enters into an infinite loop it seems to perform the following action of invoke expression to send a get request to this p dollar p this one this dollar p 34 that one right there with the same name as authorization and then we got an if statement here if the response is not equal to the string none the script sets the variable of c and any errors encountered during that process is caught by the e then finally the concatenated output it sends the url p and s that one right there using the invoke rest method cdm let with the method of the post and the same name again of authorization header before the output is the first encoded to ut f8 it says then the script sleeps for eight seconds before it loops again and it's hidden in a powershell window all right so part of the code is quite clear to me some of this other obfuscation has been used isn't so clear but will become clear later on of course so now we understand at least partly what the code is doing has some loops occurring inside it this is just the plain version of the code as i mentioned before we have three options here we have obfuscate we have encode which is that base 64 we've seen in previous c2 videos and we have the constraint mode so let's obfuscate this bird boy and see what's produced now you can see this is very different to this this has a lot of extra characters a lot of symbols and number adding and random characters to further confuse windows defender and get it off its trail as it were so let's use this and see what 
sort of result we can get from Windows Defender. As you can see, I'm using a 22H2 on a Windows 10 Pro machine. This has the latest versions of security updates applied already. And if we just go over to updates and security and Windows security, we can see we've got virus protection enabled, firewalls enabled, device security enabled, all green ticks, all good to go. So let's get started. If we paste the obfuscated code now within this PowerShell ICE window and run it, what sort of result can we expect? So let's do that. So the code ran, completed, and Windows Defender is sleeping. <laughs> Go to sleep, boy, as it were. So what do we have over on the attacking machine? As you can see, we have a shell that's been created with a backdoor of the IP address of the victim's machine. Boom. So now if we type our sessions, we can see here we have the session ID available with the IP address. The host type is a Windows, the desktop username, and the session is active. So let's interact with this session. So we type shell and we'll take this ID and paste it over here and hit enter. Now we can print working directory and there we have it. The, com the machine's completely ours now, it's been owned. It's game over. So if we hit LS, we can see a list of everything that's sitting on that desktop already. Can we change directory? Oh, no tab featuring. So we have to type it up ourselves. Does it understand that? Yes, it kind of did. So we are in print working directory now we are in the desktop and we have ace ace new a daemon text and a text file confirm that yes and yes so can we make a directory or a folder called villain one And there we have it, Villain 1 has been created. Amazing. So, so we've successfully, first of all, broken into the victim's machine in this case. Windows Defender is completely asleep. We're able to add files and not yet remove them because it's not a complete framework, especially with that GUI aspect like we saw with Havoc. But nevertheless, very nice, very slick, very powerful. Let's take this one step further and let's see if we can tag team this session with another red teamer per se. Villain actually facilitates this collaboration methodology within it and it comes under the connect framework. So we need to first head over to another red teamer's machine, for example, and, and we can run Villain. So if we run Villain on this Parrot OS machine, and what we want to do, we want to leverage connect, but we first need to know the IP address of the first machine we want to connect to. So this Kali Linux machine has this IP address. So we need to connect to this particular machine on that team server, which comes under this core server. So we hit connect and we connect to the Kali machine's IP address with the port number for the core server, which by default is always set to this 65001. And then when we hit connect, something interesting happens. You get this information request, but over on this machine, as you can see, we have an actual unique number that's generated. And as you can see here, it gives you 10 seconds to enter this generated password, as it were, over to this machine in order for them to collaborate. So let's try that again and get the password in quick enough this time. So there it is, copy that and paste that. Oh, it's quite quick, 10 seconds don't look like it's enough. 
So let's try that again. Boom. And you type the number here. So it's 92267. Enter. Now here you can see we're synchronizing the servers and they are synchronized over on this machine. You can see here, sending requests, connection established, synchronized, and we have one additional shell session that's been added. So if we go to sessions, boom. Both machines now are interacting with the same user. We have this Windows machine. So now even the Parrot OS can get on and start exfiltrating data from this machine. So if we go into shell, paste the session ID in and now Parrot OS has a shell. There we have it. We can LS in. We're already in. Uh, what I did like is that the print working directory also changed dynamically from the other print working directory. If you remember, I changed the working directory from the root to the desktop. That's quite neat as well. So we have the collaboration aspect done. We have full ownership game over for the machine itself. And Windows Defender on 22H2 is completely sleeping. What can I say? I can't say any more. It's super slick, easy to use, clearly documented, and a W all the way for villain. To really bring home how powerful villain really was during this experiment is to demo the exec command and to torture this poor victim for the final time. So let's let it run. All right, so we was able to Rick roll the victim in the end and we let him be on his humble way. Conclusion. Now we saw how powerful villain really was and tremendous work done here by Matrus, of course. But for me, what underpins this is that we have this constant battle between red teamers and blue teamers and while it's present that some exciting opportunities do reside here for red teamers, it's critical to approach new command and control frameworks with a pinch of salt and a hint of caution and consider the potential risks associated with their use and use cases. Blue teamers, of course, must remain up to date on the latest threat intelligence and use advanced tactics to simulate attacks and evaluate the effectiveness of their security protocols and controls. Like it said, it only takes one time for a red teamer to win, whereas blue teamers need to win all the time. My boy Jacoby obviously says that. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember to join Hacking Time. We have a public forum where we have open discussions. At the minute, I'm heavy on my trading and futures traders in particular. So if we've got any traders out there, I'm happy for you to join. If you want more advanced features, definitely join Hacking Time Plus membership where you'll be open to a plethora of information that cannot be discussed, obviously, on YouTube. Stay safe in the cyberspace and I'll see you there. Peace out.